Oh, wow, pretty poor. Yeah, that's just pulled off. I just want to go home. An exposed live cable there. No, 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 no. It's not very clever, is it? I can tell you're absolutely riveted <laughs> by that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Artisan Electrics. Today I'm going to be going through some inspections with Ruben, referring to the regs and uh, just to give him more of an idea of what we're looking for and what regs they refer to, as well as going around doing a few tests and, and inspections. So come along with us, hopefully there's something interesting for you and uh, let's get on with it. So our inspection schedule when we were uh, doing the ICRs, all of the softwares are based off this model form. They might change it around or the wording ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. If you're ever unsure about what you're looking for in there, so say 3.1, yeah. presence and condition of distribution of earthings equipment. If you see at the end, mm -hmm. you've got these reg numbers. So if you go to those reg numbers, it will tell you exactly what you're looking for and what the minimum standard is. Right. And it's the same with everything. So it goes through every single section and they'll all have reg numbers next to them. Yeah. So you can refer to it. So if we do a bit of that today, mm -hmm. we'll be doing, say, let's do section three. You can check out the reg numbers and we can find out what is supposed to be there and what is the minimum standard. And yeah. we'll go through the inspections together. Earthing arrangement, meter tails, meter and equipment and isolate a wear present. Yeah and we need to code whatever we find. So let's go and have a look at that. So if we look at our service cable, mm -hmm. do you notice anything about it at all? Apart from the gunk on it? Well, yeah, something, so it's leaking pitch from it. It's an old pilt cable, paper insulated lead cable. Right. I mean, it's not much to say about it in all honesty. They all kind of look like this. Some of them leak quite a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> service head is the next one. Yep. Anything bad about this, it looks in good condition, looks sealed. Doesn't appear to be any exposed light parts on it. Yeah. Then what's the next one? Is it meter, meter tails? It is earthing arrangement. Earthing arrangement, so this is our earthing arrangement here. Right. That doesn't look too clear. In fact, I mean, it looks pretty poor in all honesty. And that clamp might be putting undue pressure on them because we've got a loop supply here. Right. And they can continuing the earth through that clamp. Yeah. I don't think that was put on by the DNO in all honesty. And then our meter tails. Yep. So I don't know if you noticed anything about these at all. Uh, the fact that they're both brown and one of them's neutral. The, yeah, that's one, definitely. <laughs> there seems to be as well, I don't know if you can see that, Max, there seems to be something leaking out of that tail. I don't know if it's just ink and it's got a bit warm or something and there's a uh, no isolator here so that's our first section so we can make observations about this about this poor uh, the earthing arrangements are actually good it's just the the connections not that good right that's our first uh, section of inspections done let's go on to uh, the next one so then we've got um, alternative supply so we haven't got anything here any micro generation or anything like that section three which is our earthing and bonding arrangements so presence and condition of distributors earthing arrangement. So I might put my observation there for that ropey bonding clamp. Put one, an observation here for the, it squeezing the lead cable yeah. on that one for the loop supply. Cause I don't, it, next door I might not be getting a good earth cause it's looping in and going to the next one and it's only literally just being squeezed together. Yeah. And then put another one for the state of the clamp and how loose the connections are. This one, 13.1. It says durable warning notice with the word safety electrical connection do not remove. So you notice on those bonding tags, yep. those words are written on them. Shall be securely fixed and visible near, and it needs to be at the every earthing conductor or earth electrode. So if it's at the MET, there needs to be a label there. Right. At every bonding conductor or extraneous conductive part in the MET. So if, if you were ever unsure, I mean, you should kind of guess that one, but you can find it and it's here in black and white. Yeah. You don't have to second guess what the, it's asking you to look for. Right, yeah. And this one's all about the consume unit. So this would be interesting because it's an older board. Yeah. And then we can go through these ones. Nice. And if you're unsure, we'll try and find the uh, the relevant reg. So do you want to go and have a look for the bonding conductor? Oh yeah, that's it. 
can see it. Yep. So has it got a label on it? It is it a sound durable connection? Do you want to give the bonding clamp a wiggle wiggle? No. Sure. Definitely better than the one inside. And it does have a label on it, yeah. Yeah. What about its positioning? Is it in the correct position? Do you know where it should be roughly, the uh, bonding and the water bond? Uh, no, to be honest. <laughs> so, so within a foot of where the uh, where it income, right. so, or as far as reasonably practical. So there, yeah. it's on the outgoing side. So if it was on the incoming side, it shouldn't be, sometimes people accidentally bond the other side of the gas meter. It needs right. to be on the outgoing side going into the house within a foot within reason, right? It's, it's far as reasonably practical, so it doesn't have to be bonded here. Yeah. It can be bonded inside the house as the, as the pipe ends. It's right. So yeah, there's one disappearing under the floor, and there's two that go up. Mm. Ah, I see. So there's cross bonding underneath here. That used to be a uh, regulation. What else could it be in here? There's lots of pipes over there. There's nothing disappearing down. There's lots of cables underneath there, though. You see it a lot, to be honest. It's not. So it's, a, it's, it's obviously not very nice, but the cables aren't likely to be damaged. And if they did change the kitchen, they could then fix it to the walls. I imagine these cables were put in after the kitchen was put in. The cables were just thrown around the, behind the legs. How many times has my bag got in the way today? So we can't find that water bond for now. We'll keep looking. Um, so confirmation of earthing conductor size. So do you know what size the earthing conductor should be? Is it the same as in normal circuits where it should be um, one point? So what do we so install when we replace a consumer unit? So we put in 25 mil tails, yeah. and do you know what size earth conductor we stick in? 16, isn't 16 it? 16 mil, yeah. Right. So at the minute, that's a six mil. Right. Now, for the earthing system that's yeah. here, and at the time it would have been okay. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, if you'd done the, like, the adiabatic equation, it'd probably require like a three mil earth or something right. for what was here. But if it was a PME system, it'd be a bit different because mm. then it goes in line with the neutral conductor. Right. So that's more of a, if you've got 25 mil, you'd need 16. So it'd right. be undersized if it was a six mil still. Yeah. I should really brush up on my um, my theory before I start talking about it. But <laughs> um, so the earthing conductor size is okay here. Uh, accessibility of earthing conductor at MET, so we can get to it. It's falling out of the the actual clamp itself. So the bonding should be accessible. So when uh, they build a kitchen, mm -hmm. they should leave. You know, normally they put a hole about that big just for yeah. the tap and you can't even access it. Yeah. It needs to be there so you can see if it's rotting, if it's actually connected right. for inspection, but at the minute we can't find it. But yeah. How many times have we come across it where we can't access the mm. water bond? It's completely buried behind the yeah. cupboard or we can just about see it in a distance so it's not right. It's telling you there in black and white. Yeah. Everything's written down here. You just got to be able to find it. So maybe if uh, I put some flags in it, it'd be a lot quicker. Yeah. So it's kind of up to your own judgment, but it's every pretty single, clear whether or not. Yeah, but every single one of these is down to the assessor. So right. we might get another electrician come here and test and can, can code everything completely different to me. Right, yeah. It's the engineer's judgment, it's your judgment. Mm. You're the one that has to be able to go to stand up in court and justify yeah. what you said. Right. And you need to have an underpinning knowledge to back that up. Let's have a butcher's hook near. So um, have you learned about a little child's finger? There's that little oh yeah that lights up. It's um, like an IP. Mm. It's an official thing. It's like a little finger that can get in it. Yeah. So we've got a, a rating for the top edge of consumer units, and then a rating for the sides and bottom. Right. So this one needs to be sort of IP X4. I think it is X4 or X4 X X4. So you can take a splash on the top of it, and these yeah. ones you won't, can't be. Get, there is official sizes for the uh, IP rating, so it's whether you can get like a little finger in there or a little tool to get in. But you can mm. see on this, there's small holes here, but you couldn't get anything in there, could you? No. Nah. And the top edge is sealed pretty much. I mean, around those cables, there's a little bit of a gap. Oh no, there's quite a big gap here. I can get my finger in. So if there was a leak and water come down here, it would mm -hmm. come straight into the consumer unit. Right. Security are fixing. It's not just hanging off the wall. We yeah. can access it okay. Do you want to go and uh, pick another one? Yeah, so all of these things we're going to have to try and get into the habit of looking at. 
So what's the next one on the list? Principal escape route. So if we look here, right. it's under the stairs. So if this caught fire, it could trap people upstairs. It would be an issue. So we would put, could put C3 down here. Yeah. There's no signs of burning inside the consumer. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it would be rated higher. So if yeah. I saw any arcing or signs of burning, I would yeah. put a C2 down. Right. And there's signs of burning on a principal escape route. Yeah. Because it's under the stairs. But right. if it was just, say, in a kitchen cupboard down there, mm -hmm. it probably doesn't even need coding because it's... Yeah. It's made of plastic, but there's no mm. burning in it. It's irrelevant, really. Yeah. So in an MCB, how does it actually detect like how much currents? Um, I believe there's a bimetallic strip. So as currents passing through, mm -hmm. it warms up, and then that actually distorts and it bends oh. and straightens out. So it's basically it will straighten out or bend, yeah. bend in, and then when it makes, it will break the circuit. Oh, so it's the, it's the heat passing through it that causes it to distort. Yeah. So that's why it takes a while of over so say it was a six amp circuit and mm -hmm. you're running say 13 amps through it yeah it would take a while to trip because that's got to warm up right and then trip whereas yeah. if it's a big surge mm -hmm. so say it was six amp and you put 30 amps through it mm -hmm. it's going to instantly go yeah it's not going to be some a gradual thing yeah so a lot, on a lot of shower circuits you'll have a six amp a six mil cable protected by 40 amp so it's incorrect right with a say eight kilowatt shower on it. Mm. But because the shower's never on for a long period of time, the yeah. circuit will be safe and oh. won't burn out or do anything with yeah. it. Because it's never got time for that to actually reach and touch to turn the MCB off. Mm -hmm. So they work in two ways, fault protection and overload protection. So it's a short circuit, so live and neutral, live and earth touching. Fair so enough. in rush and it'll turn off yeah. within 0.4 seconds. And then that's the overload side of it. Mm. So there's no way of actually testing it to see if it works. So yeah. all you can do is do the maths to prove theoretically whether it would turn off because you're not allowed to just do a short circuit to see it turn off. Yeah. So that's why we do these tests to prove it will turn off. And no, no. essentially that's all there is to it. Pretty exciting stuff. I can tell you're absolutely riveted <laughs> by that. <laughs>
Why is uh, it much lower than the old oh, weight? Do the lives again because it probably might have gave you oh, breathing. Yeah. But so why would it be lower? Uh, so the uh, to have a shorter path. So they have a path somewhere. So what could, what could be giving it an easier path back to the board, a more direct route? You would think about what's connected to this circuit. Yeah. So if we go over here, right. We've got a lovely boiler. One of these pipes is connected right. into it and they both have the gas and the water have bonds on them. Yeah. So they're cross connected here. It's like a big junction box. It'll be the same up in the, actually they're in the immersion cupboard here, but if there was, there right. would be. Yeah. So this is connected to the, the ring. Mm -hmm. And now you've got all of these connected and going back to the right. zoom unit. So yeah, there's another path back. So it's a bit lower. Mm. So there's our target, 0.25. So. As you know, they all are, mate. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah. Run around with that. Oh, wow. Yeah. A lot worse. 1.2. Yeah, there's rubbish sockets. No, 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 no. What? <laughs> oh, no. That was really hard to push down because of all the grease in it, and it's now stuck down. Oh. <laughs> R.I.P. my screwdriver. Will it hold? <laughs> Come on, go back out. Dude, that's the trick. You fix it just enough so the next person thinks they broke it. <laughs> Walk away. We've done things out of sync, really. I'm so hot. So we've done the ring. The shower doesn't exist. Can't find the cooker. Really can't find the immersion either. That's all we've got. So we were talking about access accessibility to for inspection and maintenance. What do you think for that pull cord there? Do you reckon that's accessible? <laughs> Looks like it's bad render in a game, doesn't it? <laughs> Switchception. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's a single cable. Is it single? I don't think it oh, there we go. They flushed a plastic box into the wall. Switch ain't gonna go back. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I shouldn't have uh, took this one off. Had an argument with the porch. It seems to be coming away. <laughs> They're divorcing very slowly. Oh, that's class, isn't it? Someone's actually took time and effort. It's class two. It doesn't require an earth, but they still, someone put a little tag there. Oh yeah. Maybe the industry isn't going down this funny. It's been, to be honest, I mean, every socket I've taken off has been really nice yeah. wiring in here. The seal is a really awkward height. Oh, I don't think they wanted to strip it back. <laughs> <laughs> it was hanging down a bit. Oh, yeah. uh, I take it it's not the end of the line. It is not, no. Can't just push it back up, mate. You've inspected that one. How does one? Okay, that's it. Remember what I taught you? you leave it. <laughs> Just fix enough so the next look person. Away, look away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sugar. <coughs> Just had that bathroom right now. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> My favourite one was when you you started doing an intro, you just started dying <laughs> for like 10 seconds, and then you're like, Hi guys, welcome. <coughs> oh, God. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Arts and Electrics. Um, I can't even see any cables in there. Is, there no. is it just? It must be above this. Okay. Do you want me to take that off? It's just. Oh, no. no, we'll have a look from above in the loft here. Yeah. Have a look in the loft first. There's yeah. Cascading laddery things. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Oh, nearly. It sounds like something out of a horror movie, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get to it. Move. <coughs> have the gong. Safe. It snaps. <laughs> so good bit of carpentry there. Oh, there's a socket up here as well, and a switch. It's uh, fully boarded up here. Can't get to anything. Um, let me see if I can get this bit of board up here. Is that screwed down? I'm oh, sorry, mate. the joint for the bathroom light. 
all good. So this socket's a little bit melted. Um, we've done it with an iron, was being plugged into it at some point, or a faulty appliance, but you can see the whole guard has failed as well. So you can get, just go straight in the screwdriver. Um, it's, it's important on the ICR to unplug appliances. So if there's a spare one there, you might just be tempted to get your loop off of that one. But if you unplug the appliance, you'll find stuff like this occasionally. So it's always worth double checking to see if these are still in place and if there's any burning or scorching underneath. So we've had a little look and we can't find um, two circuits. So there's one labeled up immersion. There isn't actually a tank here, it's just a combi and it doesn't do the boiler that's on the ring and a cooker circuit, which is a 10 mil disappearing and we can't find it. So we've looked everywhere and everything that we can see in excess is, is accounted for on either the ring or lighting circuit. So we're gonna have to put down a circuit not found. We're gonna leave the two circuits off and ask the client if they can just note down if they note something that's off or not working because then it would identify it. However, if they don't, we can then omit those circuits and just disconnect them completely when the consumer unit's replaced. John Barnes. <laughs> Do you even know who John Barnes is? Well, I thought Sunderland. he played for England, I know that much. <laughs> he done that rap, didn't he? It's a really rubbish rap. You've got to hold and give but do it at the right time. Oh dear. You can get the cover back on, it's been really slippy. Is that light on in there now? Oh, oh, no, oh it's upstairs. upstairs, didn't it? What? Oh, you need the light for upstairs, you have to come. <laughs> Unless you have to like, oh, put your hand in <laughs> through the banister, turn it on. Oh, I could really do some, there's some light in there. Hang on, where is it? <laughs> you have to go through this hole. <laughs> Keep going. You should stream. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> in that bathroom, mm -hmm. that we didn't see any supplementary bonding. Did we? Do you know what I mean by supplementary bonding? No. So there should be a little four mil going from the lighting circuit down to the pipe work in the bathroom. Right. We couldn't see anything. However, we do have an RCD on it covering the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So that has got now got additional protection. Right. So it's actually good. Now oh, that is class one. <laughs> Didn't turn the light on, John. Better than most uh, upfront RCDs. Oh, damn. Eight. Eight. God, come on. All eights across the board. I mean, if you don't have Snoop Dogg on your song, what's the point? Maybe we can get Snoop on the channel. Yeah. So we're on section five final circuits. Mm -hmm. So if we go down to five dot. 1.8, condition of accessories, including socket outlets and switches and junction boxes. So 651.2, which my finger was on already. Uh, note V, so five. Confirmation that the installation is not damaged or deteriorate to impair safety. So would you say that socket over there with the melted terminal is damaged to impair safety? Yeah, because well, the burning isn't. It's melted good. a bit and uh, now the shutters that go into it aren't functioning as they should do, so it yeah. can, can potentially expose the live parts. Right. So we'll put down a C2 on there under that banner. Right, we're all done for today. Let's see if Ruben retained any knowledge. Uh, what is the max ZS of a TNS system? 0 0.8. 0 0.85? 0 0.8. Oh, 0 0.8. Oh, it, was in, it was in there somewhere. <laughs> um, we will see you next time. Cheers.